assuming you saw the television over the weekend, the screaming, the craziness, the lunatic hell-bent on murdering an entire crowd of people with his car. Everything about what happened in Charlottesville over the weekend was awful. Maybe the worst part was the feeling you got as you watched it, that things were completely out of control. This is what chaos looks like. One man swinging a Confederate flag like a club, his opponent trying to burn him with a homemade flamethrower. All of this happening on a city street at midday and no one trying to stop them. What country was this? Where were the authorities? What happened to the police? Is this America? Our colleague Doug McElway was there in Charlottesville on Sunday and he had that same question. When the tear gas started to fly, thrown by protesters, the police themselves began to evacuate that. I asked the guy who was in charge, I said, where are you going? He said, we're leaving. It's too dangerous. They had an opportunity to nip this thing in the bud, and they chose not to. Multiple videos show marchers, countermarchers, and members of the press being beaten with cops nowhere to be seen. One video shows law enforcement hurting a group of white nationalists directly toward a knot of left-wing counter-protesters with predictable results. None of this seemed to bother elected officials in the state. Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe said this morning that cops there did, quote, a magnificent job. The over-his-head mayor of Charlottesville agreed with that. Unfortunately, there is a long history in this country of politicians, for whatever reason, preventing the police from doing their jobs in times of crisis. Way back in 1991, New York Mayor David Dinkins let the Crown Heights riots rage for three days before allowing police to restore order there. You've seen similar scenes recently in Ferguson, in Baltimore, Berkeley. Police stood aside while demonstrations turned into riots, and now in Charlottesville. A woman died after authorities allowed chaos to spread. Political violence is a virus. Once it flares up in one place, it is likely to spread elsewhere. Cowardly politicians are not just hurting their own communities when they allow this. They're putting the rest of us, our country, at risk.